Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Megan and here we talk about all things books, writing, grammar, and more. Please make sure to subscribe. I post videos every Tuesday with the possibility of bonus videos on Fridays. Today I'm here to talk to you about something extremely important in the writing and editing industry. Well, really any industry, but I'm going to be focusing more on writing as that's exactly what I know but that is how to avoid online scams, whether you are a freelancer or you need to hire a freelancer. Scammers have gotten good, like really good. They have figured out the internet and they now have websites, bank information, company names, and some sort of sob story. It's now harder than ever to completely avoid scammers Remember back in the day when you would just get an unknown number on your phone and not answer it? Well, you can't really just do that anymore, especially if you're going to be working with freelancers or you are a freelancer and you need work. I'm here to help you protect yourself against those scammers. As both a freelancer and someone who's hired freelancers, I've encountered so many scammers, I've lost track. But knowing what to look out for has saved me time, money, and my reputation. Here are the things I look out for to avoid those scummy scammers. These are all either scams that have been tried on me personally or on people that I know. Let's start with some actual scams I've seen going around on the internet. The first has to do with equipment. Scammers will often ask you what sort of equipment you're working on, and then if it's not the most up-to-date, They'll try and talk to you about buying new equipment in which they reimburse you for the equipment that you're buying. Whatever equipment you're working on is just fine. This is your business and you don't need some other company telling you that you need different equipment and to purchase it all up front with a reimbursement check coming your way. Another popular scam going around on the internet right now is people who have mastered faking checks or cashier's checks. What they'll do is they'll write you a check, but it will be over the amount that you asked for. Say you're charging someone $550 for a project. What these scammers will do is send you a check for say $750. And then when you point it out to them, they'll say, oh, oops, can you just cut me a check for the extra $200? And you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound like a problem. I have the money and the rest is theirs, but they sent you a fake check. So when your bank gets a hold of that, you will owe your bank $750 and the scammers just made a free 200 bucks. Don't fall for it. Another scam to look out for is if you are hiring a freelancer and say they charge $1,000 and you say, oh, I'm sorry, my budget was actually $200. And then all of a sudden they're trying to work with you. No freelancer in their right mind would just say, oh, I'll give you $800 off. Let's do this. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you're someone who needs to hire an artist, take a good look at their portfolio. Go ahead and do a reverse image search and see if it's full of stock photos or if any of the art is actually stolen. Another big one I hear of in the writing industry is people working with what's called a vanity press. And it may not always be called this, but some things to look out for, especially if you're a newbie writer, is working with small companies that ask you to fork over thousands and thousands of dollars for things that you could just do on your own, no problem. And then before they actually publish you, they might start making threats at you. And they may also keep charging you more and more and more money as you go. Maybe where you were told that the initial project would be $3,000. So you paid it in full and everything they say is done. And then all of a sudden they want another $2,000 to send it back to you. Do not give them the money. I'm sorry, you're out $3,000, but get out. Another scam I've seen going around on Fiverr or Upwork is people wanting to share their account with you. What they'll do is they'll reach out to you and say, Hey, I noticed you have a great account. I'd love to work with you. I will do all the work from here on out. You just give me all your details and the split the money 50 50. That is not how it works. They're going to steal your account with all your good reviews on it, pretend to be you, give low quality work, and then take all of the money for themselves. So what can you do to protect yourself? Here are some red flags that you definitely need to look out for. 
First is horrible grammar. And I'm not talking about a typo or two. I'm talking completely and totally unreadable documents that they send you or even emails and messages where you can tell that English is absolutely not their first language. And I wanna be clear, people who do speak a different language are not always scammers. So if someone's calling you with an accent, it does not automatically mean that they are trying to scam you. I've worked with plenty of people from other countries and they were totally legit and they gave me great work. But many times they will pretend to be a company and trying to hire you, but you can't even read what they're telling you. If this is the case, run. Another huge red flag is needing your bank information. No one needs your bank information. If you are a freelancer and you work on platforms such as Fiverr, Upwork, etc., there's also something that you can look out for. If someone gets a hold of you wanting to hire you, but then they want to talk to you off platform, don't do it. One, this is against these platforms policy. So if you get scammed and you get a hold of these platforms, guess who's responsible? That would be you. Number two, these people do not want to leave a paper trail. When you're on say Fiverr, you have a full message board and Fiverr saves these and customer service can actually look into your account and read all of these messages. You want this proof if something goes wrong. If you take a phone call or a Skype off of their platform, you have absolutely no proof of what went on and you are out the money and you'll probably be off the platform as well. If someone on these platforms does wanna video chat you, these platforms have the option for video chat and I believe that they're recorded, same as all the messages, so you have proof of everything that was talked about. Another red flag you can look out for, usually, I would say most times, if people want to hire you as a freelancer, they should be asking for your portfolio and not a resume. Think about it. If you're hiring an artist, do you want to know what school they went to and how long they've been an artist? Or do you want to see their actual work so you know what you can expect? Being asked for your ID. No one needs your ID. If someone's asking for your ID, do not give it to them and block them. You ever heard the old saying, if it's too good to be true, it probably is? That is so true in the freelancing world. If you have almost no skills and you don't have a job and your portfolio is empty and someone is offering you an insane amount of money to work for them, think about it. If someone asks you to pay before you can start working, why would you need to pay before getting paid? They just want your money and there's no actual job. They might try to cover this up as fees or whatnot. Don't pay them. Unusual payments. If people are trying to pay you in gift cards, gift certificates, coupons, this is not money. This is not how you should be paid. Unless it's a close friend of yours who you actually know and you're okay with payment like that, then that's fine. But anyone on the internet should be paying you in actual money. They have no website or online presence whatsoever. This day and age, everyone should have a website if you're a professional. If I can't find you online, I'm going to assume you don't actually exist in the capacity that you're trying to tell me that you do, and I'm not going to hire you or work with you. Someone who reaches out to you completely out of the blue and unprompted. This is basically like those phone calls where they would just call you and you would hang up, but the online version. If you have not stated that you're looking for a certain individual in order to do work, why are they reaching out to you? Even if it's not a scam, it's completely unprofessional to be doing so and you don't wanna work with someone who is begging people for work. They don't have a portfolio. If they have no prior work to show you, they're either A, a newbie, in which case they should have work that they've done themselves. Again, let's look at the artist. Even if an artist doesn't have any commissions, they should still have a portfolio of work that they've done for themselves. Or B, they don't have a portfolio because they don't do work in that and they're just trying to get your money. And last but not least, it just doesn't feel right. If something in your gut is telling you to walk away from a situation, you need to listen to your instincts and do so. 
So there you have it, common scams and red flags that can help you avoid being scammed on the internet. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more bookish and writing related videos. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.